Wayne and Louise Cobb from Anchorage, Alaska. We had three boys with uh, factor eight deficiency severe. In the early years, we felt alone, like we were the only people who had kids with hemophilia. And with this coming together, now we don't feel alone. We can call somebody else. So that's what the organization does, is gets everybody together. And you're not alone. There was a lot of struggles, of course, gr growing up uh, in Alaska, in such a remote area. And of course, we didn't even know about something like NHF. But I think probably the biggest difficulty was always dealing with the HIV infection, and all three of our sons were infected. And then we lost our youngest son to AIDS. We moved to Anchorage after the HIV infection, and we were dealing with that, and of course, with the loss of one son, and then with all, all those things, all that discrimination people dealt with, um, we were dealing with, and it was Wayne who said, you know, we can't be the only ones in this state. We need to try to get a hold of other people. Once we started contacting people and formed a, the Alaska Hemophilia Association as a nonprofit, that was more like a chapter support each other through these difficult times. But after the first two or three years, it was like, well, what about treatment? You know, we had new babies born with hemophilia. Doctors up there didn't know what to do with this. I was at the time was working on my uh, degree in social work, and one of the things we had to do was a research project, and so. I said, why don't you let me do my own research and I'll do a needs assessment for hemophilia treatment in, in Alaska. So I did that and then I put that package together and, and took it back to the National Hemophilia Programs in Atlanta and presented it to them. But their response was basically, um, you've got this huge state with, with no roads, no railroads, no way to get to people. Um, we don't understand your climates or your cultures. You know, they're an East Coast city and we're up there in the wilderness and we have no idea how to do this. So it, at that time, I just said, well, you know, we've founded this nonprofit, Alaska Hemophilia, so maybe you could give us grants to help get us started. So we contacted uh, hemophilia doctors on the West Coast, tried to find some that were interested in coming up a couple times a year and doing clinics. And we just began doing um, comprehensive clinics once a year. In our house, we ran a bed and breakfast, and then when we have clinics, we close all the rooms off and had doctor's rooms, physical therapy, all the other rooms around. And uh, the patients loved it because they sit in front of the TV, play with the dog. It's nice homey. It's not like going to a hospital. It's not so antiseptic smelling. The doctor said, this was wonderful. And that's where we had it. We did it that way from then on. <laughs> and that was really where NHF became so important because since we didn't have doctors or nurses there, we had to really get educated because what do, you, what do you do in that six months in between? NHF made it possible for us to get out to all sorts of meetings and trainings and meet all these key people that could help support our efforts and it was fantastic. NHF right from the start was hugely supportive. 